Hi, I'm Jeff Davis, and this is a BigQuery Concepts video brought to you by ROI Trading. Today, I'm going to show you how you can save a bunch of time and a bunch of money by selecting the right schema for your data in BigQuery. Let's move over to the demo environment, and I'll show you how it works. So we're going to start by looking at this data set, BQ Demo. And you can see there are four tables. There's a customer table, an order table, a line item table, and a product table. And this looks like you just dumped the data directly out of your production database and loaded it as is into BigQuery. Now, if we look at the customer table, you can see that we have 75 million rows. Every customer is going to have 100 orders, so we have 7.5 billion orders. Every order is going to have 10 line items, so we have 75 billion line items. And we have a relatively small number of rows. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to run a query to generate a report. We want to get some insight from this data set. Specifically, we want to see which zip codes had the highest sales totals for one particular month. So the month is going to be March of 2018. And you can see that I'm going to go ahead and run this query while we're talking. You can see that what we're doing is we're starting by finding all of the orders from March. And then we're going to take those orders and we're going to join them to the customer table. And we're going to join from the customer table to the line item table. And then we're going to take the results of that join and we're going to join that to the product table. And then what we're going to do is we are going to group by customer zip code. So it's going to take all of the line items for all of the orders in a particular, for all the customers in a particular zip code. And it's going to project the zip code and it's going to sum the total sales. And then what we're going to do is we're going to order the results in descending order. So at the top, we should have the zip code that had the greatest number of sales in uh, March of 2018. Now this query takes a minute or two to complete. So we're gonna fast forward till it's done and look at the results. And we're back. So our query has completed. It took two minutes and 29 seconds to finish. It processed actually 2.02 terabytes of data. It returned uh, cumulative sales for all of our zip codes and 40600 was the best performing zip code. Now, I should also take a moment to look at the amount of data that was stored on disk. This is the amount of data that was processed by my query. If we look at each of these tables individually, you can see that this table took up about nine gig. This table took up about 2.36 terabytes. This table took about 201 gig, and the product table is negligible. So uh, if you add all of these up, you end up at about 2.65 gigabytes of data stored on disk. So just some summary uh, information. For normalized tables, you're storing 2.65 terabytes of data on disk. When you run this query, you're processing 2.02 terabytes, which is going to cost you for on-demand pricing about $10 and 10 seconds or 10 cents. And it takes 149 seconds to execute your query. So you can export your data in its normalized format out of your production database, load it into BigQuery, run queries with joins, and everything works. But this is neither the fastest nor the least expensive way to uh, use BigQuery. So let's look at an alternative. I'm going to switch over to this tab, and I'm going to look at a different data set now. I have a denormalized table, which has all of the data from the four normalized tables, but pre-joined and all stored in a single table. So if we look, we can see that there are 75 billion rows. Okay, uh, This is one row for every customer, order, line item combination. You can see if you preview the data that every single row has customer information and order information and line item information and product information. So what this means is that for every line item, you are replicating the order data and the customer data. So the customer data, instead of being stored one time on disk, it's being stored a thousand times, one for each line item for each order for that customer. So this is obviously going to take up a lot more storage. And you can see that it's taking up 16.8 terabytes of storage. So this is seven and a half times the amount of storage that's used by a normalized data set. That's obviously going to cost you more money to store the data. 
but we're going to see it makes your queries quite a bit faster. So here I've got a query. I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. And this is going to generate the same insight. Uh, so again, what we're going to do is we're going to find all of the orders from March um, for all, and then we're going to aggregate based on the zip code and sort in reverse order. There are no joins because all the data is pre-joined in the table. So you'll notice this query is already done. Okay, you can see that instead of taking two minutes and 29 seconds, it took 15.8 seconds. It processed 2.2 terabytes of data. So it is a little bit more expensive, but it is, uh, it's a little bit more expensive to run. It's 10% more expensive to run, but you get what is, let's see, that's 149 divided by 15.8. Actually, let's do 15.8 divided by 149. Right, you get an 89.4% reduction in query execution time. So the question is, is it obviously better? And the answer is it depends. This is gonna cost you more to store your data on a monthly basis, and it's gonna cost you 10% more every time you run the query, but it's gonna be almost 90% faster to run your queries. Now, you can actually get a better price performance combination with a third schema type. And this is a nested repeated data structure. So you're thinking to yourself, you know, this denormalized table, the performance is great, but Jeff, I don't want to pay to store the customer data a thousand times. Uh, that seems awfully redundant. So what you can do instead is use this schema. So if you look, you can see that what we've got is we've got the customer and order information. So you have basically one line or one row for every customer order combination. And then you've got this line items column. And the line items column is a repeated column of type record. Repeated in BigQuery means array, and record in BigQuery means struct. And so this is an array of structs. If you actually look at the data in preview, you can see that there's one row for this customer and this order. And then what you see here is the array. So instead of having 10 rows for 10 separate line items and repeating the order and customer data for each line item, instead we have one row for a customer order combination, and that row has a column, which is an array of structs. This is going to save us quite a bit of space on disk. If we go back to details, you can see this is taking up 6.93 terabytes. So you have saved over 50% of the storage of a denormalized table. It's still more expensive to store because you're still storing more data than a fully normalized data set, but this is much less expensive than the fully denormalized table. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and run a query to get the same insight that we got from the previous table, but from my nested repeated table. So again, I'm gonna run this. And what we're doing here basically is we're finding all of the orders in March and we're unnesting that array to create an intermediate table that has one row for every line item. And then we're simply grouping by line item and sorting and so forth. And you can see the query is already done. This query took 9.9 .9 seconds versus 15.8 seconds versus 149 seconds. And you can see that we only processed 1.2 terabytes of data. So again, let's do a little quick math. If we do 9.9 .9 divided by 149, okay, this is a 93.5% reduction in query execution time from the original query. And this also processes 40% less data. So it's 40% less expensive, or yeah, less expensive. So it's six some odd dollars instead of 10 some odd dollars. And you notice the results are exactly the same. So this is great. Uh, you've got normalized data set, denormalized, which is faster, but more expensive. You've got a nested repeated data structure, which is the fastest. And it's a bit more expensive to store the data, but it's actually considerably less expensive to run the query. Now, there are a couple of more tricks that I can show you. Um, one is partitioning. So as it turns out, when you do the previous query, when you search for all of the orders in March, it actually has to read all the orders from the entire year and then throw 11 months of data out 
and process just the remaining March orders. That's not very efficient. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to look at this table. This is also a nested repeated data structure, right? So we still have a repeated record column with our line item data. However, if you look at the details, you can see that this table has been partitioned. It's doing day partitioning on the order date column. What this means is that all of the rows from March the 1st go in one partition, March the 2nd go in a second partition, and so forth. When you want to read only March rows, what's going to happen is it will read only the March partition. So it only reads one month's worth of data. It doesn't have to read 12 months and throw 11 months away. So we're going to run a query that looks exactly like the previous query, except it points at our partitioned table. So you can see that we're looking at the partition table. Everything else is the same. Let's go ahead and run this query. And we'll notice a couple of things. It should be faster. It should also process quite a bit less data, which makes it less expensive. So you can see that this took 5.1 seconds. Okay, so again, we're gonna do 5.1 divided by 149. This is a 96.5% reduction in query execution time versus the normalized data set. And you'll notice that it's about 5% the amount of data processed. So instead of costing you 10 bucks, it costs you like 50 cents. Now, we're going to look at one additional uh, table definition mechanism that you can use to improve your query performance and your query costs. We're gonna look at something called clustering, okay? So if I look at this table, you can see that this is not only partitioned, but it's also clustered. And when you do clustering, it's kind of like partitioning, but it's for non-date columns. Uh, you can actually do it on a variety of different data types, but it's more flexible than partitioning. So let's say you partition based on the order date. So you've got all the March rows in March partitions. But if you cluster by zip code, what it does is on March the 1st, it takes all the orders and it groups all the 95136 orders together and all the 95137 orders together. And then when you filter based on the customer zip code, it actually only reads the clusters that have the rows that you want and it only reads the partitions that has the dates that you want and it further reduces the amount of data read. Further reducing the amount of data read reduces your query costs and your query execution times. So we're gonna do a slightly different query to illustrate this. What I wanna do is I want to start with uh, this query. I'm gonna go back to just the nested table. So this is not partitioned, this is not clustered. This is just our nested repeated data structure. And I'm gonna look at sales for the first six months in one particular zip code. Okay, so I wanna see how much we sold in the first six months of 2018 in the zip code 8754. So we're gonna run this query and it'll take a few seconds to complete. And then we'll try the same query, but we'll do it against the partition table and then we'll do it against the partition and cluster table. So this query says that we had 2.296 times 10 to the 11th power of dollars worth of inventory sold in 8754 and it processed 1.2 terabytes of data, and it took us just over nine seconds, okay? So now I'm gonna run the exact same query, except I'm gonna run it against the partitioned table. So you can see if we scroll up, this is doing it against the partition table. So if we run this, what we should see is it executes more quickly and it's less expensive. So this took 3.8 seconds, right? So this is a 60% reduction in query execution time. And you'll notice that it processed only half the year. So instead of processing 1.2 terabytes, it processed 600 gigabytes. So this is half the cost. And now we're going to do the same query, except we're going to do it against partitioned and clustered table. Okay, so I'm gonna run this. And if all goes well, it's gonna finish even faster. So instead of 3.8 seconds, it took three seconds. And instead of processing 600 gigabyte of data, it only processed 10 gigabytes of data. Forgive the transition there, I made a little mistake and we had to come back and re-record the end of the video. Uh, we were saying that you only processed 10.5 gigabytes of data when executing this query. That takes this from being a $6 query to a five cent query, which is a 99% reduction in cost. 
So you can get vastly improved query execution times and significantly less expensive query costs simply by changing the way that you store your data on disk. If you use normalized tables, that's convenient. But if you go to denormalized tables, you are going to vastly improve your query performance, albeit at a cost. The queries become more expensive and storing the data becomes more expensive. If you go to a nested repeated data structure, you're going to minimize the increase in storage cost and you're gonna reduce the query execution times further and actually make the queries significantly cheaper to run. Throw in partitioning and clustering and it's a really big win. So hopefully this is useful to you and you can go in and start changing your schema on tables as appropriate for your use cases and saving time and money. If you liked the video, go ahead and click on like. If you wanna see other videos from ROI training, check out the rest of our YouTube channel. And if you wanna be notified of new videos as we publish them, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks very much.